I think that's happening. Whew, just think I'm thinking out of the back of the truck like, with my engine hoist. Um, kind of out of breath, but all right. So yeah, take a look. It's a, a Craftsman Atlas lathe. Got an offer up. Six hundred bucks. Came the cabinet. Has actually all the motor stuff. I already took it apart. So my goal is to degrease it and uh, kind of restore it. I'm not. Yeah, I guess I'll do a take it apart and play. I guess. So let me show. You. I got the came with the motor. Came with all these accessories. Tons of accessories I got to go through. So now my garage is a total mess. I had to take the engine hoist out of it. It's there, but it's gonna replace this. Uh, might get rid of this little mini lathe. The mini lathe is cool, but it's just you know obviously it's not rigid, so it can't really cut. You know. So, yeah, like I said, it's, uh, yeah, I want something a little bit more rigid, I guess, to cut more, I guess, have a finer, better cut, I guess. Um, yeah, these are cool for, like, little hobby stuff, but it's not, if you want to cut some serious metal, it's not going to, not going to do it. Yeah, so when I got it, it was in the guy's garage. The guy, I got it from, he had, it was his dad's, and he, uh, his dad died, so, um, so that's, I mean, it was like 600 bucks. I mean, I guess it's a good deal. It came with all the... I mean, I've seen these go for a lot more money, but it's kind of a cool lathe because it's, it's kind of small. It's a half horsepower, a single phase, 115, but it also had this reverse switch. So actually when it's all put together, it looks really nice. But like I said, I had to take it apart just to get it in the back of my truck. I didn't want to run a truck that a lift. I mean, that'd have been like an extra 200 bucks. You know, the cool thing about this lathe, there's a lot of documentation. There's even 3D printed plastic gears, which I might even design some new gears, I'm not sure to lower the feed rate, but I have all the drawers too. It's nice locking drawers. So I'm gonna go through and first phase is just to degrease it. I'll paint it machinery gray, like all the other machines. Yeah, it's, my garage are kind of a mess because I'm doing three products. I'm more, I gotta get rid of some of this stuff. But yeah, that's my Sugami uh, CNC lathe, converted CNC lathe. Those are my CNC, CNC machines, but all right, so I gotta sell some of this stuff, man. Keep on taking projects on. That's my uh, Orga 3D printer, and I'm actually designing a couple of different 3D printers. All right, so we use my purple power cleaner. Go through here. I'm gonna have to leave the beach, so I'm gonna have to coat this with some kind of oil so it doesn't rust, flash rust. So yeah, it's a 12 inch lathe, 12 inch. I guess the clearance is 12 inch. The max piece you can do is 12 inch. I guess 36, is this, no, it's maybe 24, I'm not sure. I, I got to measure between here and here. Probably looks like more like 24. This is between here and here. All right, so what I think I'm going to do is make individual videos about the painting, like the saddle and, and the gear train. But, um, yeah, I got to get this thing painted before it starts raining again. So, next couple days, I'm going to be pressure washing this thing, just the, the bottom part. I'm already um, painting the, the cabin out there. Machinery gray, Krylon. You can see that. I got an extra on the top too. Yeah, you want a gloss paint because um, if, if it's like a matte paint or anything, if it's not super high gloss, then the oil will stick to it easily. It'd be hard to get rid of the oil or get the oil off of it. So, looks like the original color was a machinery gray, and then he looks like I hand painted over it. With like a lighter color, um, so I'm gonna be going back to the original color, color which is like machinery gray. But I gotta get this. I gotta figure out how to get this. Is a little slop in here. Um, but I, I need to get this on the back. So I've already, I've already removed the lead screw. Um, like I said, I want to get this all off so I can get this, you know, thoroughly pressure washed. Um, and then uh. I can paint it and put it back, at least because I'm running out of space in here, so I want to get all this stuff back, put back together as soon as possible. Yeah, I'm trying to keep these assemblies and as much intact as possible, but this was actually pretty easy to get off. It was just two cap head screws in the front, instead of loosening that from here. That's good. So, like, when I go to rebuild the, build the individual components, clean them up, um, they'll be in it. I won't, I'm not going to lose order. <laughs> so I want to keep the gears in order. I'm not familiar with this thing enough to know, like, what's, what's up. Yeah, this is kind of cool. This is 
I mean, it's not, I'm glad it comes apart on assemblies. So it looks like to remove this one, these two cap screws and there's a nut down there. Probably can't see it, I don't lie on, but there's a nut that freezes up from the ways right here. So, pretty cool. One thing I think it's kind of weird though, is you have to take the whole, if you want to change the belt, you gotta take the whole thing apart, the whole gear train apart, just to change the belt. Which is kind of a headache. Yeah, this thing's pretty, it's pretty much inevitable that you're gonna get this, all this swerve in there, but yeah, like I said, I think this is from like the 50s. Um, just because of the uh, cross slide feed, it has a button type versus the lever. Um, all right, so yeah, it was uh, interesting, I had to flip it over to get, I mean, it was two cap heads and, and a bolt, but here's what it looks like. The, it was clamping it down from below here. Um, all right, so now I can take this off, pressure wash it, degrease it, and get some paint on this thing. Ways like it. I mean, this, but this, this guy. I mean, whoever he took care of it. This is not there, right there, but no, it's trying to be done. Who really took care of it? The lead screw looks perfect. Like all the lead screws look perfect. So either it didn't use it very much, or you know. All right, so I'm not going to film every part of this thing. Basically, it's I'm just scraping and painting off. We're uh, taping off the ground surfaces. And uh, so I wipe this down with some acetone before I paint it. I can't get it all off, but you know, just cast iron. So you're not gonna, unless I want to take it and put it in my sandblaster, you know, get this rust off. So I'm gonna wipe down acetone, paint machinery gray. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned this before in the other part of the video. Um, so it looks like this has been restored at one point before. Um, I can tell it's been taken apart. The person that painted it, you can see the paint peeling away, but they painted it with a lighter color gray. So you can really see the difference between the original gray, which is the same color I'm gonna paint it, like the original machinery gray, and then uh, this lighter gray. I got the thing back on the stand there. I'm kinda sick all week long, but I'm gonna clean the ways. Got some W4 and I'm gonna use Scotch Bright. Scotch Bright, I think, is the best. Start with coarse and go down to finer. All right, so first phase, the latest done here. Got the waist pretty good. Um, I could go a lot more extreme than that, but I don't want to take too much material off. So, all right, let me show you the uh, other stuff. I gotta go. All right, so now I gotta the, go do the individual components. And there's definitely some annoyances with this lathe, but. You know, like the fact that you have to take this whole thing, if you want to change your belt, you have to take this whole thing apart. I don't know, I mean, I'm kind of still on the fence about those, uh, the linked belts, you know? So, um, I might or might not look into that, but, um, all right, so I think I'm going to start with the gearhead first. Uh, but I'll make individual videos about that. But, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to ultrasonic, clean all these gears, get all the grease off, take the bearings out. Yeah, the interesting about this one is I know this has like a reverse gear, but on this lathe that actually had a reverser. But yeah, I gotta go through this motor, make sure it's fine too. Check the star capacitor and stuff like that. But like I said, I'll make individual videos, but all right, pretty cool, 600 bucks. Um, all right, awesome. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.